Hi guys, welcome back to Tech Radar. I'm John McCann and I'm here to show you how to set up your brand spanking new shiny Pixel 4 or Pixel 4 XL. They're the same thing, so it's going to be the same process. So let's jump straight into it and find out how to set them up. So we're going to set up the Pixel 4 XL, but the setup is exactly the same as on the Pixel 4. So whichever handset you have, this is what it will look like. So when you first power on the phone, you get this lovely little screen, just hit start. And we're literally just going to follow the step-by-step -step guide as the Pixel takes us through the setup process, which is super simple. Uh, first of all, connect to Wi-Fi if you haven't got a SIM card with data on it. And once you've either connected it to Wi-Fi or you've got your SIM card with data up and running, the phone will just take a moment just to check for any software updates. Depending on when you buy your phone, some new software updates may have been pushed out between it being boxed up and then you taken it out uh, and ready to use. So if there are updates, as there are in this case, it'll install them before going any further and it can take a few minutes as the screen helpfully shows. After the update process, you have an option. You can choose to copy across the apps, photos, games, pictures from your old handset to the new Pixel 4 or 4 XL. It also works with iPhone, but you won't get the same level of transfer, such as apps won't be copied over, but photos and content should be. Um, however, if you are using this particular copying function and click next, you will need a physical cable to do this. And it does guide you uh, through, tells you which cable to use, but if you haven't got a cable or you'd rather just pull the data from a backup from your Google account, if you hit don't copy, we'll wait a moment and then we will be given an option to sign into your Google account where it will be able to download a backup of a previous handset, all your apps, your games, your photos, your contacts, your Wi-Fi passwords, it'll all come down. So we can do that. We'll just quickly log into ours. And once you've logged in, you need to agree the terms and conditions. And then again, it will check your account info and it's basically looking for any backups that you might want to pull down onto the phone. Uh, then you uh, can set your date and time, very simple. It should be set if you've got a SIM card in there to your uh, current location's date and time, so you can continue on. Uh, you've then got a variety of Google services options. Do you want to have auto backup on? Do you want it to use your location? Do you want to send diagnostics back to Google? Do you want it to automatically install app updates, etc., etc.? You can toggle those and accept what you want. You then have to set a screen lock. It's always, you can skip this section, but we would definitely recommend setting a screen lock. The pin has to be at least four digits long, or there are other options. Um, but for now, we'll just set a pin and then we'll hit next. So once you've entered your pin, you're then given the option to set up face unlock. Again, this is something you can skip and get to in the settings later on, but it's a nice feature to have. It works pretty well. Uh, I've been using this phone for a little while now, uh, and it is quick and easy. There is no fingerprint scanner on the Pixel 4 or 4 XL, so the only biometric unlock you can do is face unlock. So we will quickly set that up. It is very quick and easy. So to set it up, you need to lift the phone up and place it in front of your face and you have to hit your face in the globe and then you just gently look around the space and fill out the blue and make it actual color by just gently tilting your head and you're done. Once you've set up face unlock, you can further refine the setup process on the Pixel 4. Uh, this is enabling other Google services such as its Clever Voice Assistant, Google Pay for contactless payments, uh, a nice now playing feature which when on the lock screen with the always on display showing, if there's a song playing, it will tell you, it will recognize the song, it will tell you what's playing, which is always quite nice. So first up, you can set up Assistant and you can have it voice match your voice so it's only you that it responds to. So if one of your friends shouts out, hey Google, your phone doesn't wake up and they can shout crazy commands at it, it is set to you. So if you agree to that, you've got to wait. And I've already set it up on previous devices, so I don't need to do anything further. If you hadn't already had Assistant set up, it would ask you to say three different phrases around the Hey Google sort of terminology, just to really get your voice matched to it, so it knows it's you is speaking rather than someone else. Uh, once that's done, you can move on. You can squeeze for Assistant, uh, so the side of both the phones are actually sort of a touch sensitive panel and if you squeeze them it's a way to launch assistant you can also launch assistant using your voice or swiping up from the bottom corner of the phone so there are various ways to do it so the squeeze is one that we actually use the least so 
it may you may want to do it later but if you do want to set that up you can test it by squeezing the side of the phone with your hand quick squeeze and release and you can adjust the amount so if you only want to be able to do it lightly or if you want to really have a firm squeeze like that to make it work somewhere in the middle where set by default is generally a good idea so once you've done that you can hit next next up is quick gestures and we're going to have a whole video which talks about the setup of quick gestures so check out the link uh, in this video for that video and we're just going to skip this for now uh, you can make your lock screen smarter again that's with motion sense and that is covered in our other video so we'll skip this Google does offer you other options in terms of adding more accounts or turning on that clever music feature, changing the wallpaper, but all of this can be done from the settings menu in the phone as well. So you don't necessarily have to address any of these straight away. So we'll just hit no thanks. And now we've completed it. We've come to the end of the wizard. It's adding the finishing touches and we're into the phone and you can start using it. As you can see in the top, it will still complete the setup. Um, it's just installing the latest app updates for Google's apps. Uh, but otherwise you can start using the phone, you can go to the app store, you can start downloading apps, you can go and check out messaging, if you swipe up, you've got your apps. But that's it, that is how you set up the Google Pixel 4 and 4 XL. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, let us know in the comments below if you'll be picking up the Pixel 4 and if so, which colour? In the meantime, why not check out our full review of the Pixel 4 and 4 XL, hit that subscribe button, don't forget to like this video as well, that helps us out massively. And thanks again for watching. For all the latest tech news and reviews, head over to techradar.com.